To get the most out of this video, you'll need to know a little bit about linear algebra, in particular matrices and linear transformations. When you think about linear algebra, probably one of the first things that comes to mind is matrices or maybe solving equations. But what's linear about that? Like, what does linear even mean? And, you know, where are the lines in linear algebra? Hey, welcome back. My name is Drew, and in this video, we're going to be talking about why we call it linear algebra in the first place. So the reason we talk about matrices so much in linear algebra is because they are a convenient means of representing and working with linear transformations. And whether you realize it or not, linear transformations are sort of the thing that we're focusing on studying in linear algebra. But why are linear transformations called linear? What does linear even mean? Well, here's the textbook definition of linear when we're talking about functions. In words, a linear transformation is a function that preserves vector addition and scalar multiplication. Now, before I tell you where the lines are in this definition, we have to say what a line is in the first place. In linear algebra and other situations where we're using vectors, lines tend to look like this. If you pick two fixed vectors u and v, then a line in Rn is all vectors of the form u plus s times v, where s is a real number. For example, in two dimensions, if u is the vector 1, 2 and v is negative 1, negative 1, then the corresponding line would be written like this, and we'd visualize it as the line that passes through the point 1, 2 in the direction of the vector negative 1, negative 1. And for what it's worth, this is often called a parameterized line because it's defined using the parameter s. Okay, so here's the punchline. There's another way to define what it means for a function to be a linear transformation, and that is as a function that maps lines in the domain to lines in the codomain. More precisely, a function t is linear if t of u plus s times v is equal to t of u plus s times t of v for all vectors u and v and for all scalars s. This is like a new version of our textbook definition from before. In fact, they're mathematically equivalent, meaning any function that satisfies one definition will also satisfy the other. Now, if you're feeling particularly mathematical at the moment, try to prove this. Try to prove that every function that satisfies definition one also satisfies definition two. Let me know in the comments how it goes. Anyways, that's the main idea. We call all of these things linear because in some sense they carry lines in one space directly onto lines in another space in a pretty methodical way. Okay, so to summarize, linear algebra focuses on matrices a lot, but that's because matrices are the convenient way to work with linear transformations. And the point of this video was that linear transformations are called linear because they carry lines in one space to lines in another. So that's it. I hope you found this video useful. If you have any questions, leave it in the comments and I'll do my best to answer. Go ahead and give this video a like if you enjoyed it and subscribe for more fun math content. Thanks for playing along and I'll see you in the next video.